Hi everyone, I'm Dr. May Seibel, editor of My Menopause Magazine. I've just returned from the annual meeting of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, and while I was there, I interviewed Dr. Richard Santon, and he is a professor at the University of Virginia and one of the leading authorities on estrogen and breast cancer. Find out in this interview the truth about estrogen's impact on breast cancer and how tamoxifen works to prevent breast cancer from happening. Let me, let me begin by just asking you to state your name. I'm Richard Santon. And you're? Professor of Medicine at the University of Virginia. And I am at the an annual meeting of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. I heard Dr. Santon give one of the best lectures I've heard in a long time on the impact of estrogen and how we can better understand estrogen's association with, or lack of, with breast cancer. So maybe you could talk first a little bit about the idea if estrogen causes breast cancer or doesn't cause breast cancer. You were talking about the fact that it has, it depends. And you were talking about the speed at which breast tumors replicate. We didn't realize until several years ago that it takes up to 20 years for a breast tumor to grow from one cell to a cell that's big enough to find it on a mammogram. Now if that's the case, and we are giving women menopausal hormonal therapy, it's possible that that therapy would actually cause those occult tumors to grow more rapidly and therefore be diagnosed earlier on a mammogram because they're growing more rapidly. So we think that a lot of the studies that have been uh, published and the studies that you read about in the newspaper or see on television is really an effect on estrogen to cause pre-existing tumors, too small to, to be seen, to grow more rapidly and then to be diagnosed. So basically what you observe, based on the time it takes a tumor to grow, that there really wasn't enough time for a cancer to just start de novo, except in a very small subset of patients. That's right. We, we estimate, based on a model that we've developed, that only 6% of the tumors that were seen in the Women's Health Initiative study, that's the main study of hormones, only 6% of those were brand new tumors. 94% of them were tumors that were already there at the time the study was started, but they were too small to be seen. And you also talked about how that estrogen also changes the way the breast look, making it a little bit more challenging to see a breast tumor. So we know that as women get older, the amount of density of the breast decreases. And it's a lot easier to see a cancer in a breast that has little density. Now, hormone therapy in menopausal women increases breast density. To some extent, it masks the ability to make the diagnosis. So this is one of the complexities of uh, analyzing what happens when you give hormone therapy to menopausal women. Now, something that you said in terms of the use of tamoxifen, which is in, in a way an anti-estrogen, and that actually the anti-estrogen tamoxifen may not be so much preventing cancer as slowing down the growth of tumors already there. Maybe you could just talk about that briefly. Well, if you think of an anti-estrogen influencing an occult tumor, a tumor that isn't seen, and it causes that tumor to grow more slowly or even to get smaller, there would be fewer women diagnosed with breast cancer after the five years of being on tamoxifen. And really what's happening is tamoxifen is just altering those pre-existing tumors, uh, but not actually causing prevention of breast cancer. My wife heard this talk. She likes to hear these talks when I practice. And she said, well, this is really tumor suppression. This is not uh, tumor prevention. And she's right. We're suppressing the tumors that are there and therefore a woman doesn't have the diagnosis of breast cancer because they're not big enough to be seen. Now the good news about it is from this uh, your analysis is is that the tumors the breast tumors that did develop tended not to grow crazily but to grow to detection but not necessarily to a point where the woman ultimately died from the breast cancer. In general that's true but in fact, in the 13-year follow-up of the Women's Health Initiative study, a few women actually did die uh, 
in excess of women that took the uh, placebo. Mm -hmm. It was about one out of 2,000. It wasn't many. And what we found there is that those tumors were detected a little bit later because of the more dense breast. That wasn't the case with estrogen alone. So it looks as if, in terms of safety, using estrogen alone versus the combination, it's better to use estrogen alone if you can. But you can't do that with current therapies if a woman has a uterus. One final thing I'd like to ask you, and that is you talked about a new drug that's just been approved in the last two weeks, really. October the 3rd. And I wonder if you could just mention very briefly about what it is and your hopes for it in terms of treatment with uh, menopausal symptoms for women with this new option. Well, this is really a new concept of hormones. We're combining uh, two different compounds, one of which is an estrogen. The other is a, an agent that has both estrogen and estrogen blocking effects. When you put the two together, it's a completely different uh, situation. It's neither estrogen nor anti-estrogen, but a composite of the two. It's a composite of the two. So it works totally differently on each tissue. So it looks to be an anti-estrogen on breast, and we think it may very well prevent breast cancer through the same way that tamoxifen does. On the other hand, it works as an estrogen on the bone, and it works as, on an, as an estrogen to block hot flashes. So from the data we have now, 6,000 women that have been studied for about three years, it really looks as if this has very many of the positive things of hormone therapy that we have now without the risks, and it has the potential of also preventing breast cancer. If all of this is true, this will be a huge breakthrough. Major breakthrough. And without mentioning the commercial name of it, but could you mention the two substances that are in it, the, the, the specifics? Right. So one of them is called conjugated equine estrogen. Mm -hmm. That's a combination of a number of estrogens, which have been used for 50 years in the United States. Right. So we know what the properties are. The other is a newly developed agent that has both some estrogen-like functions and some estrogen blocking like functions depending on the tissue. This is called basidoxaphene. It's already approved in Europe mm -hmm. and it's now approved in the United States two weeks ago in combination with an estrogen. Well it sounds very exciting for the future. I think so. Uh, I, I've been around uh, studying breast cancer for about 45 years now and to me this is the most promising thing that I've seen in my career. Uh, where it might be possible to relieve symptoms and to prevent breast cancer at the same time. We'll see. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.